Welcome back again. The algorithm continues to bless my channel and um, my subscribers have doubled in size over the past week and that is not insignificant. I am amazingly grateful for this huge growth spurt that my channel is going through right now. I am also very deep in denial that it's happening. But a huge thank you for all of you who saw my video on your recommended feed and decided to stick around. I will have an announcement concerning my uh, 10,000 follower milestone at the end of this video. But first, we're going to get into some reaction content. Today we're continuing on in my series of reacting to terrible TV shows that decided to give cool alternative looking people weirdly mainstream makeovers. Except today's video is not going to be as much of an alternative person got a makeover, but rather uh, the host of one of these shows got a personality makeover. One of my favorite fashion channels on YouTube is called Style Like You, and they do a lot of not just alternative fashion content, but more along the lines of body positivity content and how personal style relates to like the reclaiming of the sense of self. It's an incredibly lovely and positive channel that challenges a lot of our beauty ideals, and they have in fact done an interview with Stacey London. Stacey London being the host of What Not To Wear, Stacey's commentary on Lex's style in the episode that we reacted to was... Mm. It's, it is a whole fashion. In Japan. It's very clear that she may or may not have been repressing some things. A lot of you mentioned the interview that she did with Style Like You and the video that she did for their channel. She also was a guest on their podcast and I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it and I will include it in the description. I'll also include the link to the videos we'll be reacting to in the description as well. Uh, a bit of a content disclaimer though, I did not know this, but apparently Stacey London has in the past struggled with disordered eating. And they talk very bluntly about that in the podcast. So for those of you who are maybe in recovery from that sort of thing yourself or are just sensitive to that topic, they do talk about uh, numbers. So if you're trying to avoid that kind of content, then maybe skip out on the podcast. But yeah, Stacey has kind of done a bit of a 180. It's clear that she does feel a little bit remorseful about what happened on What Not To Wear. She admits that if presented with the opportunity to do a show like that again, she wouldn't. And she did feel that the show stifled creativity. And I'm so excited to have this conversation. I feel like these are the conversations that I want to be having, mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit different from reality television. How so? I was on What Not To Wear for 10 years, and while I really believe that show, in terms of being an unscripted show, um, did have a lot of merit, mm -hmm. right? We really wanted people to see themselves differently because if you can see yourself differently, I think you can believe something different about yourself. And the great thing about style is it's so transformational that when when you can see yourself in a new way, you know, people would go off after the show. They would get married. They would leave their bad jobs. They would leave awful, you know, spouses. Partners, yeah. And it was such an incredible thing to see. Those are the moments that I really believed in. Mm -hmm. What I found more and more sort of um, restricting, I guess, is that it was a scripted format, right? So you knew at minute 16, we'd be giving the rules or at minute 18, you'd see us talking in a, you know, mm. 360 degree mirror. And that format became very rigid. And what I found is that in a lot of ways, we started to impose kind of a universal style on people, rather than taking the time to really kind of take their style and let it blossom mm -hmm. much more organically. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the idea was to do something radical and to do something that would um, sort of interest audiences, not just on the coast, but in mm -hmm. the mid, you know, mid states um, and the flyover states. And so it was, a, it became for me a little bit antiseptic. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I, if I, if there was one thing that I could go back and change, I think it would be that. Mm -hmm. And that's also come with my evolution. When I left What Not To Wear, 
um, I think I've changed so dramatically that it wouldn't be it wouldn't be something that I would want to go back to because I wouldn't have the creative freedom that I would want for clients or for, you know, people who are on the show, for mm -hmm. the guests. Mm -hmm. So I have not watched the video we're about to react to. I saved it so that I could have a good genuine reaction for you guys. So let's let's get into it. I'm pretty excited to see what she has to say about her own personal style now. So this is called What Not to Wear's Stacey London is Having a Midlife Renaissance. And in the thumbnail, it, she's wearing a bit of a renaissance dress. I love the fact that I'm sort of reconnecting to style in a way that feels as joyous as it did when I was a kid. I was obsessed with Wizard of Oz when I was a kid, only because of the ruby slippers. Anything sparkly, anything shiny, I went to like a turkey. I also really like the fashion in the Wizard of Oz, but more for the gingham than anything else. And at five, somebody asked me what I wanted to do with my life. And I said I wanted to be a cocktail waitress because that was the only job that I knew of at the time where you could wear fishnet stockings and like short tutu skirts. Interesting goals to have in life. You could also be like a theatrical performer. I do think that if any of the viewers from What Not To Wear saw this outfit, they would think that I would need to be on my own show. I'm much more interested in what makes me happy now. I know myself a lot more now. I think the box that I felt I had to be in on What Not To Wear really was about figure flattering easy to wear, generic, put together style that didn't offend anybody. When you have to kind of please so many viewers, you want to do something that is a little bit safe, a little bit easy to repeat so that the audience feels like they know you. If I went back to television, I wouldn't be able to conform to what I wore before. I don't know if this is like a gunny sax dress or not, but it definitely looks like a gunny sax dress and I'm very jealous because I love them, but they're usually quite expensive. I definitely notice her smiling a lot more in this and smiling a lot more genuinely. She has like a completely different like I don't like words like vibe or aura because they're very new agey but she just has this whole different way that she holds herself this is a very interesting like change I like that she's really acknowledging yeah this thing that I did in the past is bad and I don't want to be that person anymore like we stay in character development in this house I look forward to my style evolution I am gonna be 50 years old and I can wear a princess dress. Everybody should be able to accept new versions of themselves because that way they'll be much more accepting of other people. I love it. I'm sure a lot of you are catching on to perhaps her own body confidence issues and how it maybe affected her relationship with fashion and style. And I think with age, she's really developed a certain wisdom where she doesn't hold on to that beauty ideal anymore. And it's really freed her to embrace that self-expressive part of fashion. We stand personal growth. These earrings, you know, I bought these on the street. I love the color. I don't think that everything needs to be expensive and precious to be wonderful. I can find something really cheap and crappy and think it is just the perfect thing for me. And that's one of the nicest things about personal style is nobody gets to tell you what isn't isn't beautiful. I absolutely agree with everything she's saying there. Fashion and style does not have to be expensive. What I'm wearing right now, the fabrics that I made this out of were free. While it's definitely okay to want nice things and to want expensive things, it should be acknowledged that you don't need expensive things or brand name things in order to have a style. And that's certainly one of the things that's lost on television. TV shows need to get their clothing from somewhere, so they usually get the clothing sponsored. So uh, brands will give them clothes for free that they can put on their guests that they can use to advertise those companies. The thing about personal style is that it isn't necessarily inherently consumerist, whereas reality TV is. So there's this disconnect there. You can find really beautiful, amazing clothing and in fact the most beautiful and amazing clothing I've found was 
dirt cheap. And you just don't get that when you're trying to quickly make over somebody's closet right away. Closet makeovers and style changes aren't overnight things, just inherently. You have to invest time and energy into a wardrobe to really find good pieces in order to have a really stylish wardrobe. Whereas if you just go to the mall and spend a bunch of money, yeah, you can get a new wardrobe, but it's not necessarily going to have a style to it. I thought I would wear it casually with sneakers, but when I went to try these pants on at the store, they the only shoes they had to try things on with were these high heels. And I was like, oh, I mean, I should probably, oh no, I, I did put on an earring. There you go. But I was like, this is revolutionary. It, it literally transformed the way I saw these pants. And that's always super exciting to me when you can surprise yourself with the way you are gonna wear something. This happens to me more as I age than it did when I thought I knew everything. I think the more open I am, the more the more exciting actually style becomes. I love that she's just talking about the experimentation and the freedom of just being able to pair whatever you want with whatever you want and finding a way to make it work. A lot of people look at my streak and they're like, you would look so much younger if you dyed it. And I'm like, well, I don't actually think about this in terms of age at all. I think of this as a battle cry. <laughs> I got this when I was very sick with psoriasis. It just kind of showed up. And it feels almost like a good luck talisman to me. Like I would never, ever, ever get rid of it. And I'm actually getting more and more gray and I'm kind of psyched. I mean, if I can have silver hair this long, that is dope. It just didn't become an issue until I was much more in the public eye. And then it became sort of a streak. It was like me, Cruella DeVille, Rogue from X-Men. You know, it was like very distinguishable. And I kind of liked that. And even now, if people recognize me, they either recognize me by my voice or my hair. I don't want to change things about me. I want them to be reflective of who I am and my life experience. And this is a part of me. She stated in the podcast that she actually had like a clause in her contract where they could like, they could change whatever they wanted about her appearance on the show for the show, but they could not touch her gray streak. They had to leave it. They couldn't dye it. Like nobody was allowed to do anything about it. That was hers. The problematic nature of being on that show aside, I do have a lot of respect for anybody who's like, no, this is how I look. And nobody is allowed to change anything about that because this is just who I am and you have to deal with that. It's funny that I feel in some ways more youthful now than I did in my 20s. In my 20s, I was so lost and unhappy in so many ways. I was trying to be cool and fabulous, even when I was at my heavy weight. But the idea that I could say that I worked at Vogue, I went on these exotic trips and got to shoot models and all of this stuff made me feel like when I went to a cocktail party, I could be cool instead of really grappling with what was causing all of the you know eating issues in my life what i really wanted for my life instead of just worrying about the surface i wasn't asking the real questions and because of that i don't really remember my 20s at all and i definitely think that i looked better at 40 than i did at 30. so i'm not sure i'm going to look as good at 50 as i did at 40 but that's sort of not the point i'm willing to give that up in order to have the knowledge and the confidence that I have now. It's so refreshing when people are willing to admit that the issues that they had with like their relationships or their interpersonal connections or their sense of self comes from within and then actively try to change it and then improve as people. I love seeing this. I want more of this. Can we just have a show that's literally just about people that were bitter, angry bullies in their 20s and 30s, but then now that they're in their like 50s, 60s, 70s, they realize that, oh, things aren't that serious and I can kind of mellow out, cool. I can feel beauty because I wrote something that I'm proud of and it feels like an extension of who I am and that's beautiful. I can feel beautiful because I look like damn hot in an outfit that I put together and I'm so proud of that. Beauty is about love and confidence and contentment and it's not about the surface. Some of the best advice that I can give is to step away from the mirror and find your reflection in the eyes of the people who love you and care about you and want you to succeed and then go back to the mirror later. Because we can't just think of beauty as being a surface. It's actually 
incredibly more complicated and I think uh, far more enriching to talk about it in a different way. Can I just say how much more I appreciate this Stacey London than the Stacey London that was on What Not To Wear? I wanted to slap the Stacey London that was on What Not To Wear. I would say this dress works on somebody probably under the age of 10. I could slap her, but this Stacey London I would like to give a hug to. So yeah, that's what Stacey London is up to now. I guess she did another show similar to What Not To Wear, but not quite as aggressive that ended in 2016, but that was four years ago. I am glad that she does seem to have moved on from the attitude that she had back then. She seems much more willing to embrace different styles and different ways of expressing style. I think it's really easy to want to be bitter and be like, well you were so bad back then so why should we, why should we accept that you're good now? But I think it's always a good sign when people are willing to admit that they didn't like who they used to be and actively change themselves. It does seem that she has actively tried to improve herself and the way that she approaches fashion and the way that she approaches potential clients. And I think we should always be willing to embrace other people's willingness to change. So when I hit a thousand subscribers, which was my first really big milestone, I made an upcycled jacket that I did a giveaway for, and I want to do something similar again for my 10k, and I was planning on doing the same thing, having a giveaway for my 10k subscriber milestone, but I also expected it to take much longer for me to reach it. And unfortunately, due to quarantine, I haven't really been able to get my hands on supplies, so I do have a piece that I'm working on right now, and I do I do want to really take the time to make something that I, I would be happy and proud to give away to you guys. So I will, I will be doing a 10k subscriber giveaway, however, um, it, it will be a bit late because I did not expect to have 10,000 subscribers already. So yeah, if you're new here, welcome, hi, hello. It's really crazy that things have blown up so quickly and they aren't really showing any signs of slowing down. That's all for this video. I hope everybody has a good day and I will see you all next time. Bye.